Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating an icon using an effect called Neumorphism. Now this has been quite popular lately and so what I've got is a video tutorial that shows you how to create a reusable effect so that you're going to be able to apply this to all sorts of things. So let's get started with a brand new document. It doesn't matter what size your document is. To start off with, we need a base color to use. So I'm just going to get my fill here, double click on it and choose a base color. Now your color wants to be the sort of darkest color. So we're going to use this actually as a shadow. So I particularly like turquoise color. So let me go and choose this color. That's going to be my darkest color. I'll just click OK. Let's go to the swatches panel because we want to add this as a new color group. So I'm going to click here on new color group and I'm going to add this color to it. So I'm just going to click the plus symbol and we want this to be global. So make sure you check the global check mark. That's really important. Now with this color selected, we're going to window and we're going to color guide. Now you want to set this up over here showing tints and shades. So go to your flyout menu and you'll want to show tints and shades. Now also in color guide options here I have steps of four and variation set to 100%. That's just going to give you an idea as to what I've got here. I suggest it's not a bad set of options to follow. So this one in the middle is the color that we selected. This is going to be our shade color. And so now we need to select two more colors to use. I don't think I've got enough here. So I'm just going to increase this to five steps. That's going to give me a bit more variety. So I want the color I've already got. I want this color here. So I'm going to click on it. And then I'm going to control or command click on this color that's two away. So I've got these two selected because this one's already in my swatches. I'll go to the fly out menu, save colors as swatches, close this down. And now I've got three colors here, which are tints of each other. And that's really, really important. Now let me show you why that's so important. When I have this color selected, if I double click on it and if I go and make a change to it, so I'm going to make it quite a different blue. I'll click OK and when I do, watch what happens over here. All these colors change and that's what we're looking for. We're looking to tie these three colors together because it's just going to make things so much easier in a minute. So for me to go back to the color that I was using previously, I'm just going to press Control or Command Z. So they are back to turquoises. Now let's add a rectangle to the artboard. This is going to be the exact same size as my document. In this case, it's 1920 by 1080. I'm going to square it up on the artboard. So let me just go and get my align options. Make sure it's set to align to artboard. Let's center it. And this is the darker color. That's not the one I want. I want the one in the middle because everything is going to be created from this base color. And I don't want a stroke on it. So this is going to be my background and everything else, of course, is going to blend into that. It will help me at this stage to lock down that background so that it won't move because we're going to be creating things on top of it. So let's go and create our first shape. Now we're going to create a shape and it doesn't matter too much what shape you use for the base shape. I'm going to use a circle. So I'm going to the ellipse tool. I'll hold the shift key as I drag out a circle. Now you're not going to see that because the color fill for the circle should be the exact same color as the background. But just trust yourself that that shape is there. With the shape selected and do make sure it's selected or this is not going to work, you're going to open up the appearance panel. Now, if you don't see the appearance panel, you'll choose window and then appearance to open it. What you're going to do is click here on the add new fill button and you're going to do that twice. That's important because it adds two more fills to this shape. The fills are stacked on top of each other. So this is the one at the top. This is the next one and then the next one. Now you're not seeing any of these because not only are they stacked immediately on top of each other, but they're all exactly the same color. So what I'm going to do is click on the second one down. I'm going to open up this panel and I'm going to select my darkest color. And I'm going to click on the very bottom most one, open up this panel and select the lightest color. So they're all colored differently now, but we're not seeing these other two because they're hidden by this one, but we can show them. Let me just turn that off. Now you're seeing this fill, turn that off. Now you're seeing this fill. 
So you can prove to yourself that in actual fact this is working. What we'll do next is we'll go to the dark one, which is this one here. So you need to target this fill. It's really important because we're about to move this fill and we only want to move this one. So make sure it's targeted and choose Effect, Distort and Transform and then Transform. You want to make sure that Preview is turned on. That's really important. And we want to move this shape down here. So we're going to move it in a positive horizontal direction. Now I'm going to move mine probably about 8 pixels, but you'll determine what's appropriate for your shape. So you want a edge effect here that is commensurate with the size of the shape. And now we're going to move it vertically as well. So I'm going 8 pixels vertical and 8 pixels horizontal. Now I'm going to click OK and go and do a similar thing with this bottom fill, only I'm going to move it up. So Effect, Distort and Transform and Transform. This time we're going to go in a minus direction. 8 minus and 8 minus on the vertical and click OK. If I click away from the shape, you'll see that we've got the beginnings of our sort of pneumorphic effect, but it's not very subtle. Let's go and select our shape again. So let's go first to this fill and we'll choose Effect, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And the amount of the blur is going to be roughly equivalent to the amount of movement that you had. I had 8 pixels of movement. I'm going to choose 6 pixels of blur. So I'll just click OK. And then we're going to do the exact same to this one to this fill here. And I'll choose Effect Blur, Gaussian Blur. It's going to have the same setting as previously. We'll just click OK. Let me click away. And now we've got this sort of harder edge effect. And I really like that, so I'm going to save it. And the way I'm going to save it is by selecting it and then opening up the Graphic Styles panel. So you can get to that by choosing Window and then Graphic Styles. What we'll do with this selected is just click the plus symbol here to add a new graphic style. I'm going to click away from the shape. I'm going to double click on this and I'm going to call it Hard Edge. Because the center piece here is hard edged. I'm going to create a second graphic style in a minute where this one is a softer edge. So let's just go and select over it. In fact, let's just drag a duplicate away so that we've got sort of some comparison here. This one, I'm going to make a soft edge. So I'm going to select it. I'm going to the topmost fill, which is the one here that is controlling the base color. And it has that hard edge because we didn't ever apply anything soft to it. So I'm going back to Effect Blur and Gaussian Blur. And this time, I'm going to apply a smaller amount of blur. I'm thinking about two pixels of blur. And I'll click OK. So this is a sort of soft edge. I'm going to select it, click to add it. I'll double click and I'm going to make this soft edge. Now if I want an even softer edge, I can do that. So I'm going to make a duplicate. This time I'm going to come in and just adjust this blur because we've already got a blur on the top one. We don't have to add another blur. We just have to change the one we've already got. So I'm going to open that up and I'm going to apply quite a hefty blur to that, about six. I'll click OK. So you can see that it's a whole lot softer now than even these other two. Let's go and add it as a graphic style. Now at this stage, if you want to be able to use these graphic styles in future to do things with, you're going to need to save them. So let's see how we can do that. First of all, I'm going to remove from this document here all the graphic styles that I don't want. So I'm selecting all of them in here, clicking on one, shift clicking on the last of them and click the trash can and click yes. So that's removed them. You want to make sure that you don't have anything selected while you're clicking around in the graphic styles panel or you'll start to apply graphic styles to the shapes that you have selected. That's not what you wanted. Now this one, the default graphic style is going to stay there. You can't get rid of it. That's not a problem. Let's go to the flyout menu and let's choose save graphic style library. And we're going to call this neuromorphism or whatever you want to call it. Now those graphic styles are now saved as a library, so it's going to be easier for you to be able to use them again in future. I'm just going to select these shapes and delete them because I don't need them any longer. Let's see how these graphic styles work. So first of all, let's go back and recreate our ellipse. I'm going to just press the letter D to get the default 
colors here and remove any effect that's being applied to this shape as I'm creating it. So I'm just going to create the shape now with it selected if I go to the graphic style you can see how immediately we can apply this effect to our shape by just selecting it and clicking on the graphic style. Now that of course is editable because you can see that the appearance for the shape is exactly as we created it in the first place. So if you want to make changes to it afterwards you can do so but this just makes life a whole lot easier because you can just have a one click application of the graphic style to the shape. So, so much for circles. Let's see what happens when we do squares or rectangles. Let's make a rounded rectangle. I'll press the letter D so that I can get the default colors. Remove any effects at all. Round the edges of this shape. And now I want to apply our graphic style to it. Just click on the graphic style. The graphic style stores in it all of these layering effects but it's not the original shape. So the shape is not stored in the graphic style, just the effects, which means that once we create our shape, then we can apply the graphic style to it and then we're not going to lose it in the process. And we've obviously got our three graphic styles that we can create. So now we could go ahead and create an icon, for example. I'm just going to choose the default colors and I'm going to draw out something that is going to resemble a coffee cup that we can use as our icon. So I'm going to use a rounded rectangle, just dragging out a rounded rectangle here. I'm going to the direct selection tool. I'll select over these bottom anchor points here, go to the scale tool, and then I can just drag in on the edges and they're going to pull in together to make a sort of basic cup shape. Now, depending on how I pull, I might twist this out of alignment and you can just decide what you want to do here. I'm going to drag in pretty much horizontally so I'm holding the shift key so the base of my cup looks as I want it to look. Now I'm going to add a handle here. One way that you can add a handle is using the arc tool. I'm just going to drag out an arc. Press the letter A to get to the anchor point and now I can adjust these handles. So I want this to be a bit more curved. Go back to the selection tool and just rotate this arc around, make it a bit smaller and apply it to the edge of my shape. I'm going to set its line weight to something much thicker. I'm thinking something like about 20 pixels would be good. That's going to make a pretty good handle. I'll select over it now that I've got my handle. I'll choose Object Expand Appearance. That expands the arc first of all and now I need to expand the actual shape. So I'll go back to Object and Expand. I only want to expand the stroke, not the fill, so I'll just click Stroke. If I check the Layers panel, I've got a group with a path in it. So I'm just going to drag the path out of there so it's just all by itself. Now I'll select over both of these shapes because I want to put them together into a single shape. The easiest way of doing this is go to the Pathfinder. You can get to that by choosing Window and then Pathfinder and click here on Unite. So we now have our cup shape. I'm going to add some steam to it. So for this I'm going to the Line Segment tool. I'll hold the Shift key as I drag out a line. Now I'm going to make sure that it has a color on the stroke and I'm going to make it the same 20 pixels as I used for the cup handle. I'm going to create two more of these. So I'll select this, go to the selection tool and Alt or Option drag one away. If I hold the shift key, it's going to be constrained to a horizontal direction. So let's just select these and make sure that they're nice and evenly spaced. For this I'm going to the Align panel. Again, you can get to that by choosing Window and Align. Make sure that you've got Align to Selection chosen and then just click here on Horizontal Distribute Centers and just make sure that they're nice and evenly spaced. I'm going to move these all across a little bit so that they're a bit better centered above the cup. I want to make these lines wiggly lines so I'll go to Effect, Distort and Transform and then Zigzag. Make sure previews turn on, make sure you've got smooth set on and then you can determine how big a wiggle and how many wiggles you want. So if you drop it down to three, you're going to get a more subtle effect. If 
you increase the wiggle then you're going to get more of a bend on your line so I'm going to move mine back down to about 15 on the size which is giving me the height of these sort of bends and ridges per segment set to three is giving me the number of bends I'll click OK now we need to expand this as well object expand appearance so that when we go to the layers panel we see that we've just got wiggly paths so now on the face of it we've got everything that we need for the icon but we do have a slight problem these are lines and not filled shapes and so they're not going to behave correctly when we apply a graphic style to them so before we do that we're going to need to select over these and expand them but let's just see first of all what would happen if we did the graphic style at this point and why it's going to look so wrong so if you select something and you get this sort of effect you know that it's because you've got lines and not filled shapes so select over anything that's a line choose object expand you just want to expand the stroke not the fill click OK check in the layers palette that you've got just lines well I've got groups so I'm just going to ungroup them with object ungroup and here I have paths so these are filled shapes not lines that have a stroke on them that means that they're now in a form that when we apply the graphic style to them they're going to work perfectly so let's go to our graphic styles panel again and I'm going to select the middle one of these and there we have our neomorphic effect applied to our icon of course we've got three different varieties of this we've got a hard edged one and we've got our very soft edge one and you can choose which of these you want to use but you can see that taking the time to actually create the graphic style is going to save you a lot of time in future now before we finish up here remember that we created the base color as a global color let's open up our swatches panel these are global colors I can click any one of these colors and I can change the entire look of this art so let's just take it into the blues or the purples and click OK so everything the background the base color and the shadow and highlight colors have been immediately altered simply by selecting a different color so you can click on any one of these colors let's just go and click on the lightest one and prove to ourselves that we can make it any color that we like by just adjusting one of these colors and all the others because they are tints of this base color that's the really important bit is that this is our base color and these are tints of it even though we're using the base color as a shadow and one of the tints as our main color because they're all linked to each other then they're changing automatically I hope you've enjoyed this video I hope that you've learned things about Illustrator of which you were previously unaware before we finish let me introduce you to my online Illustrator training I have more Illustrator training at Skillshare.com if you sign up for Skillshare you get access to thousands of classes there including over 250 of mine in the description below is a Skillshare coupon for you which is at least as good as the current Skillshare offer and typically mine will be better I also have Illustrator training at Udemy.com and there's a referral link for every one of these courses in the description below please feel free to share these with family friends and co-workers if you enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you'll be alerted when new videos are released until next time my name's Helen Bradley thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel